Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and today we are back in the TBM 930. We're going to try to build on the uh, mistakes that I made from yesterday's flight, some new information that uh, I was reading today, um, and just slowly keep these flights going until I feel confident and uh, I should say feel more experienced with the aircraft. Um, as some of you may know from yesterday's video, I am working on the next guide, which will be for this aircraft. I'm going to do the TBM 930 and it's going to be the same principles as the A320 guide, which if for anyone who does, isn't aware, you can find on my Patreon site by becoming a subscriber of tier two or more, or by donating $10 or more to my, uh, to the PayPal account, which can be found on the channel homepage. Um, and uh, I will send you the guide uh, via link. I've already sent a bunch today. I think either eight or nine people, uh, maybe more than that today. It's four or five yesterday, so I have no problem doing that either, guys. Don't feel like you have to subscribe. There are other ways to, to get the guide. Um, for the And I, I just want to take a moment and thank all of you for the support. Um, I, I posted something on my Patreon, but I just want to say I, I'm blown away. I was not expecting the guide to get this kind of attention or support. Um, and uh, so far, the comments I'm getting back and the feedback is, is fabulous. Everyone's loving it. So far, it's, it's working out for everybody. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really uh, just overwhelmed. And I just wanted to give you guys a really heartfelt thank you. Um, it means a lot, especially this time of year. Um, so uh, just anyway, I don't want to go on, but I know I am so appreciative of, of, of the support I'm getting, guys. It, it really is amazing. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so A320 version 2 guide that is available. Find it on the Patreon site. Um, if you Again, if you need it, you can uh, hit me up via email. Um, overkill simulations at uh, gmail.com. That's overkill simulations. Productions was taken. Don't ask me how. Um, but uh, anyway, gmail.com, you guys can email me direct and uh, we'll work something out. Um, so for today, quick hop, Tucson to Phoenix, um, and then we're going to jump on uh, to go through the steps. We're going to go through the sim brief, the flight plan setup, start up the aircraft, configure everything, and go from there. So let's go ahead and jump into sim brief and see where we're at today. All right, so now that we're in sim brief, let's go ahead and set up our flight. We're going to do, I'm trying to come up with my own airline kind of transport service. I'm thinking like Sun America Transport, but I think there was a Sun America or like Sun Arizona. I don't know. Anyway, that's what I'm starting with. <laughs> and let's pick a different flight number today. Random number comes in to uh, 1594. Sure. And we're departing from Tucson Air National, heading on over to Phoenix, Arizona with Ryan Field as our alternate. Airframe, we're going to be scrolling all the way down to the TBM 900 series. We're going to use the Lido form out with the pounds today. We don't need to worry about any conversion today. Departing from runway 11 left. Let's go ahead and check the KTUS METAR. And see what we're looking at today. Make sure that runway information is accurate. And how we're going to do this is just basically by checking the winds. 320 degrees. So that would put it going this way. Yeah, that'd be a 1-1 one, one left departure. Okay, and 303 on the altimeter. We'll leave that up for now. Okay, so arriving on runway 26. Taxi out, da 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 da. Extra fuel to take 200 pounds. Um, well, 0.2 pounds, sorry. Well, see, how would that work with the TBM? I wonder if this is in percentage. It says pounds. That would be 20 extra pounds, maybe? Let's do... 10 extra pounds, I think, is all we would need. Uh, flight level, we're going to fly pretty low today. Um, let's call it, let's see here, going west, it should be odd, right? If I'm right, uh, if I'm wrong on that, correct me, guys. I think it's, if I remember correctly, there, there's always a thousand foot separation between eastern and western travel. And I think western travel is in the odds, so I think it's 15,000 feet. So, But we're going to keep it pretty low. We don't have to go very high today. Passengers, we're going to do... I think I have three set in the aircraft right now. Cargo, eh, we'll just leave it on auto. I don't care about the cargo weight. Uh, zero fuel weight's fine. And again, we're going from the Burrow Four over to Ryan. From Ryan on, jumping onto the hot heading or to hot heading over to the Ping One. Okay, so now let's go back to the top. Generate our OFP. Hit yes. And as always, I'll be printing the P uh, PDF here. It just makes it so much easier to see it for me. And we can close our uh, flight plan there. And we'll use this information here to program our 
TBM. All right, so I'm gonna move this off screen. And let's go ahead and jump in here and let's get into the cockpit and see if I can start this thing. Now I'm gonna to try to start it without looking in the documentation. This is sort of how I teach myself this stuff is I just sort of teach myself a flow and then I'll double check myself after the fact and you know, hopefully I got it right. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the cockpit view. And I think control five takes us up top. It does, all right, so crash bar comes up, battery on, standby main. Fuel pump should be on manual selection. Uh, ignition should be set to on for startup. Auxiliary boost pump set to on. Pilot off. Lights will leave off for the moment. Um, and actually, I think we should. Pulse light would be similar to the beacon, I think, but I need to get confirmation on that, so we'll leave that on for now. Let's go ahead and turn our oxygen on. Stepping on down here, let's go ahead and start the Garmin. Get up our MFD up here. <clears throat> All right, so what we'll be looking for is as we hit the start sequence, we'll be looking for the um, inner turbine temperature. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, <clears throat> to reach the greens, and then the uh, um, RPMs at about 13% is when we'll kick it in, kick the throttle up here. So you guys will see what I'm talking about here in a second. Fuel tank set on the right. It doesn't matter which one's on. So left or right for starting is fine uh, flaps let's get those up into the uh, you're not liking something what aren't you liking oh I see my throttle had the flaps down there we go all right and parking brake is set oh man that's hard to see we won't worry about those just yet I'm just sort of taking a peek at anything else I'm trying to remember here I think we're ready to start I don't think there's that much to it all right so let's get on up here and we're gonna hit our start switch for two seconds one, two, coming back down in here. RPMs looking for 13. There's 13. Let's get us into low idle. Come on. Come on, girl. What's going on here? Why can't I control my throttle either? There. That'll work, I guess. Should be looking about 500 degrees Celsius and about 53% on the RPMs. And we'll go into high idle and then move directly over to flight idle. All right, so going into high idle and then continuing to push and bring it back. And now we're in flight idle. Clear our cautions. The crew alert system or CAS. So we're monitoring here. Uh, Stono heat, pedo heat. We won't worry about the heat beam yet. All right, so now let's go to our boost pump. And boost pump we want to set to auto from here. Or ignition, excuse me. And auxiliary boost pumps also up to auto. And set fuel selectors into the auto position. Autopilot trim surface is on. Without it, the trim won't work. Or autopilot won't work. And... I really can't remember, but I know we can at least turn on our nav lights, and we'll go ahead and turn on the pulse light for now. I think the pulse light is similar to the beacon, um, but I'll get more confirmation on that. And if one of you guys knows better than I, by all means, don't hesitate to let me know. All right, um, coming up to the cockpit here, or the forward panel here, let's take our bleed and set it into the auto position. Inertial separator can come on. There's our pedo heat. Um, we probably won't need any of the de-icing switches, but uh, we'll just see how it goes for now. But it's still a pretty warm day out here. Okay, um, and we already set our fuel pumps, so now let's go ahead and program the flight computer. And I think I found a hotkey. That's six, seven, eight takes us to the back. Nine, is it one of the lower numbers? Two? I guess, I guess two would be our best one. Let's go ahead and come down here to two. All right, and let's go ahead and take a look at a few things. So let's go to our MFD first. Yeah, that's fine, we know. Go ahead and clear that caution there. And let's start with our flight plan. So just like um, many of the other aircraft, or like the A320, if you're familiar with it, it's really not that bad. Um, things are a little moved around and I, I know I still have a lot to learn but getting around this is actually pretty easy so let's go ahead and program the uh, the flight computer here alright so we're gonna add our origin 
obviously starting in Tucson, Arizona. We're going to hit enter. Throw in our destination of KPHX for Phoenix. Okay, and then now we just need to set up our departures first. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I don't want that. That's not right. Was it here? Nope. Ah, see, this is where I'm learning. I'm really trying not to use the guide. Ah, procedures. That's what it is. So I'm going to enter my procedures first. Let me click on over to my flight plan. And so just like any other aircraft, we're going from the Burrow 4 over to Burrow and then direct to Ryan. So we're going over to Burrow 4, and we're going to change our transition. Oh, hey. Interesting. Can take us straight too hot, but I guess we're not doing that, so I won't worry about that. Uh, let's see here. So it's got Burrow. Oh, Burrow to splits to Ryan to Bebo. Okay, that's right. And then if we verify that, we can see Burrow to Ryan to hot to pink. Well, so no, it's not doing the same thing. We're going to Burrow, but then from Burrow, we're going direct to Ryan. So I'm curious how I. Hmm. Well, but this is taking us to Ryan. The only one that we're not going to is B-Ball. I'm going to select the hot. There we go. Yeah, so that matches up there. So now we got... So this is just looking a little different. It doesn't look like we're doing the direct, but we've got the burrow. Although I don't know why burrow's in here twice. But from burrow to splits... From splits to Ryan, and then from Ryan over to Hot, which is interesting. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll just keep on going around here and see how everything goes. We are departing from runway one one left, so let's go ahead and hit load. Now let's go ahead and check our arrival. And our arrival runway. Oh, this is all, huh? No, we don't want that. And we're going to come in. Uh, I keep trying to use the scroll wheel on the ping one. And the transition point, um, let's actually, let me pull that up. Get Navigraph going here. Ugh, every time, I literally every time I launch it, it's got an update. Drives me nuts. Like, I get updating, that's great, but what's annoying is I can't clear that alert that pops up on the bottom of the screen. Go to favorites. KPHX is definitely on there. Let's look at our arrivals. There's the ping one. And we're going to be coming in from driver. Driver is our transition. So starting from driver. Oh, well, onto the hot. Oh, that's what we're doing. We're doing hot to ping. And then ping coming in. All right, so let's move that over. Yep, there we go. All right, so ping one from hot. There we go. And like it's got Neil here twice too. We're going to look at this flight plan, and make sure it's legit. We'll see here in a second, I guess. And then on the approach, we're hoping for two six. And the transition. Oh, well, that's the only one it's got. So I guess we'll use it. And we won't activate it, but we'll load it. Now let's go back to the MFD here. Go home, Got a flight plan, and unclick that. So from Burrow to Splits to Ryan to Hot, we're done. Jumping onto the ping, Birdie into Phoenix. All right, and then onto the approach for the ILS 26. All right, so we're good to go. That, that's that was it. Uh, minimums. While we're here, we can go ahead and check it. So let's go into the approach here. And we can go to 26. Now normally, guys, you wouldn't enter this stuff in until you had your confirmed approach. Sorry, I had another cough. Um, but we're not using um, ATC today, so we can just throw it in there. So our minimums are 1,580 feet. So 1,580 is the minimums today. I'm assuming it's wanting barometric pressure. So let's go 1,580. Hit enter. 
Okay, and did it say minimums are off? No, nope, we want minimums on barrel. There we go. Okay, and then PFD settings. Heading orientation up, that's fine. Map sync, map detail. What do we got here? Terrain. Interesting. That's kind of neat. Look at that. Ranged altitude. Where does that show? We're going to have to look for that because that could help for uh, top of descent. Hmm. Anyway, we'll look at that. Let's we'll see what happens there. Uh, primary flight display. So I'm looking at the wrong thing. Range four miles, I'm guessing, is what that is. So let me click that off again. Oh, maybe not. I don't see anything turning on and off, so we'll, we'll we'll check it out in a second. All right, so active nav. Let's go ahead and change this to the FMS. We want to make sure that's ready to go as soon as we come out. PFD map settings. Oh, so this is all that. Weather overlay off. Do you tell all declutters? Huh, nice. Okay. Back. Map range. Okay, so we increase that, decrease that there. PFD settings. Uh, PFT mode full bearing GPS bearing two other PFD settings altitude units AOA on inches cool okay we'll play with that later I don't want to uh oh oh wind data gotcha all right um I don't really want my AOA on I'm not gonna lie Kind of just fly by the seat of my pants here. All right. Anyway, so then now we just need to set our barometric pressure. So Tucson, we're currently rocking three zero zero three. There we go. And I think that affects both sides. Yep. All right. I think we're ready to get going, guys. That was uh, that was a pretty easy startup. So let's go ahead and set up for taxi. All right, so got that. That set. That set. Don't need to worry about flaps yet. Well, we can set flaps to take off. I don't mind that. That's fine. And we're gonna go ahead. Strobe light. We wait until we reach the runway. The one way. I cannot talk today. Like it's just it's ridiculous. Got our oxygen on. Just doing one last little sweep of the aircraft here. But I think we're good to go. Oh, cool. I actually just watched it change there. That was kind of neat. Uh, let's go back to MFD and get our flight plan back up, though. I do like having that up. And do we need to scroll back up? I think we do. Let's grab this guy. There we go. All right. Let's blow out of here. Um, somebody asked me in my previous video what I meant by head tracker. Um, and I hope you're watching this, but I'll, I'll try to remember to comment below. I saw your comment on my phone earlier and just haven't had a chance to respond to them. Um, well, as I'm sitting here making a video. Um, you know what I mean. I just haven't gotten around to it, I guess, without sounding selfish. Uh, today was my daughter's 16th birthday. Come on, mercy. Um, but anyway, head tracker is that there. So go ahead and go onto your browser and do a search for track IR. It's all one word. Um, so T R A C K I R. Um, and I use a homemade track IR, if you will. Um, I used to have the actual track IR5. And then the head tracking unit, the camera itself that sits on top of the monitor, um, died. So I ended up making my own using the PS3i camera. And one of the best things you can do is go to YouTube and just uh, do a search for DIY do-it-yourself head tracker. And there's some really great, um, really great uh, tutorials out there on how to make them at home for cheap. And, I, and when I say cheap, I'm talking. 20 bucks and you do not have to have great you know electrical experience you know you don't have to be some uber electrician in order to make this stuff work um, so I highly recommend that if that's something that you guys are, are into doing or looking for um, and then I just use a third-party software here uh, it should pop up here on the screen in a second there you go this guy here called open track okay and you can create your own mappings and things like that basically this determines how far the camera will actually turn based on how much I turn my head etc 
Um, so you can customize it real well. Just do a quick start. And then uh, you can see here, this is the camera. And these are the three sensors that are sitting on my head. Okay, so anyway, let's figure it out. Take a moment and answer that question real quick. All right, oh, let me get situated here. And let's change my camera. There we go, that's the camera view I was looking for. Move my microphone, might get a little noisy here. I was a little far away. All right, oh, hey, that would be helpful too. I was thinking about messing around in American Truck Simulator earlier, and I'm debating adding that to the channel. Just, you know, nothing too common, you know, just every now and then doing something a little different. And so I was debating American Truck Simulator. I've had the hardware for a while. They've even got uh, one of those shifters that uh, has the high range, low range, and the splitter on it. And um, anyway, I was thinking about messing around with it earlier. Never got around to it. And moved my rudder pedals. So, all right. So now let's just disengage the parking brake and let's get rolling. She gets taxing fast, doesn't she? Slow down, baby. Slow down. You don't have to be so mean. Where's this guy going? Get off my taxiway. What the hell he was thinking? Acting like this is his runway and stuff. So they're jerk too. Get out of here, man. Um, well, we're about to get real friendly with each other, aren't we? Because I'm not waiting for him. I learned a long time ago we don't wait for AI to, to move. Good news is, can't nobody hold me. There was nobody in that plane. Okay, that is a parked aircraft. I'm glad I didn't try to wait for it. I'm really excited to get the guide started for this aircraft. This is a really fun plane. I really enjoy it a lot. Always have. I think it's just because it's it's fast, but yet you get that general aviation feel of it. I really like that uh, that channel. What Steve Ocanevo? I like his channel. Where he flies the TBM. What is that thing? Nine fifty? Eight fifty? Eight fifty? I think. Uh, let's see here. All right. So now we want our strobe lights on. Lights to landing lights. And let's get out of here. All right, and we're just going to power and go today. touchy today. Alright, getting a little warning on the uh, torque, so I had to pull it back a little bit. Damn it. There's our 90 knots. Whoa! Alright, bad takeoff on my part. Got distracted. Not a good thing for a pilot to be doing. Let's go ahead and get that nose up. Passing 115 knots. Let's get those flaps up. Trimming a bit. Autopilot, yaw damper, flight directors, and nav mode. And she should have it from here. Oh, probably should set my uh, initial altitude. Fail. Let me grab my... Oh! My little tool here for autopilot. This thing works so great. And we're just going to set 14,000 in the box. So don't mind that little hiccup. That wasn't necessarily anything wrong with the, 
Sam, I was reaching across the desk to get my stream box or a stream deck. I don't know why I can't. My camera keeps jumping. I don't know why it keeps doing that. All right, so we are out of here, and now it's just a matter of flying our course and uh, getting up to altitude. So hopefully everything can go nice and smooth all the way up to cruise. Making our first turn. This is a slick looking aircraft. This is like has that luxury version of the P-51 Mustang when it's coming at you. It just looks mean. Mmm, we are not a climbing. We definitely shouldn't be under any restrictions or restraints. Oops. All right, so let's set our vertical speed then. Give that a tap. Oh, wrong way. That's so weird. There we go. Let's pull the power off a little bit. Make a little more gentle there. Let me see, we're on our way over to splits. Double checking myself. All right, fun times. All right, so let's see what we got over here. So com one, com two, the standby channels, engine torque, prop RPM, steady in the green, engine RPM, inlet uh, or uh, inner turbine temperature, oil pressure, oil temperature. Our crew alert system or CAS, cabin pressure, rate in feet per minute, how much that pressure is changing, difference in pressure, I'm not sure where this one is, I'm going to have to look that one up, oxygen PSI, our fuel quantity for the left and right tanks, this one's five gallons off, I wonder when it switches, amps or volts. So trim setting. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit further. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Elevator trim. So we're a little bit on the nose down. Flap status. Up, takeoff, and landing. Rudder trim. Aileron trim. Runways and airfields, I think, are waypoints. Ground speed, 209 knots. DTK. That's 289 degrees. That's 290 for Ryan. We're steady. Oh, there's a track of 290. So tracking 290 to our next waypoint. I don't know what DTK is. Estimated time of arrival, 1 minute 28 seconds, our bearing 290, distance 5.1 nautical miles, 
end trip. This should be flight time, I believe. Total flight time, we're looking at 56 minutes. Estimated time of arrival is 1818 UTC. That's arrival to Phoenix, if I'm not mistaken. So not too bad. We can go ahead and check our radios here. All right, so these are our actual radio frequencies. We can set our transponder ident. I'm not sure where we set the transponder code. I'll have to check to that. Altitude reporting transponder 1200. Oh, so this must be, so here's our transponder code. So for example, if we want to rock 2356 and enter, all right, so that changes our altimeter. And then radios, here's our nav radios. So 1105 is what we're looking at for the ILS for Phoenix. So let's go ahead and hit, uh, go back to KPHX. And we'll be looking for approach. ILS 26. Come on, babe. There we go. And the localizer is 111.75. You know what, we haven't activated the approach phase, so I wonder if that switches when we do that. Because we want 1175 for ILS 26, so let's back and check that here. Oh, which one are we on? There we go. So let's 11175, enter. All right, so we got our nav computer in there, or our nav navigation frequency in there, so that's good. All right, now we'll go ahead and go back to home here. We'll leave that on the radio. It's not a bad idea. Oh, what did I do? Did I do it again? Yes. Oh. There. All right, so now we're just cruising up to hot. We're approaching our cruise altitude. And now it's just a matter of writing everything in until we reach our... Uh, our destination. So we got our outside temperature, so that's kind of nice. Uh, I don't know what ISA means. True air speed, 259 knots. Ground speed, 260. Same thing. Navigation here, 23 nautical miles to hot. GPS is the source. There's a timer if we needed it. In UTC time, so maybe uh, did this change it. Ah, so this is to the next waypoint, because here's our UTC time right here, and we can see that it's updated. So we're looking at 18:24 to get to. I thought I had our waypoint name up here as well. Well, we can look over here to hot. So we're headed over to hot, and we should be looking at 18:24. So uh, about five minutes. Will be on course uh, now the other thing I think we can do is if you want to set your heading bug oh looks like it already we're basically on course but if you give your heading uh, knob a tap you can see the heading bug here centered with your current course line so that can be handy and we'll look at that later we may use that Got our heading course barrel minimums 1303 Got the same thing, distance here. Autopilot and yaw dampers, FMS is the flight source. Altitude target 14,000 feet, COM1 frequency. That's not too bad, all right, so it's, it's really black and white. It looks more daunting than, than what it really is. Turn the passenger's air conditioning on. I wish it actually showed the passengers. I need to get some cooler views. I want to get back there and set up some camera views. What's all this over here? Inverted flight prohibited. Aerobatic removers prohibited. Intentional spins prohibited. I would think so. Maximum takeoff. 7394? Yep, looks like it. Maximum landing 7024. Flaps up weight. Below 65.7. Huh, okay. Oh, hey, it's got our speeds here. 
158 knots for maximum maneuvering speed. Maximum operating speed, 266 knots. And it even tells you what they are. Flaps extended speed maximum, VFE. Takeoff configuration, 178 knots. Landing configuration, no more than 122 knots. Landing gear extension maximum speed, looks like 178 again. And landing gear operating maximum speed, up is 150 knots, down is 178 knots. What does up mean? As in that's rotating up? Hmm. Interesting. Cool. Use of phone by pilot in command prohibited during all aircraft operations. Good to know. Don't want to get in trouble. Let's see how we're doing here. <clears throat> Let's get the Phoenix Medar information. Gonna need it soon. So, 300 inches, temperatures 15, winds 15 miles, 13 and 6. Wow. Gusting to 21. Windy day in Phoenix right now. That's gonna be interesting for us. Uh, clouds few at 5,500 feet, ceiling 12,000, so we'll come below the clouds. Are we even having any clouds there? Eh, we got some, I guess. Eh, not too bad. I think we'll be okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and figure our approach here. See how far are we from Phoenix? Let's let's take a look at that. About fifty miles from the approach, so not too shabby. So it's not gonna be very long here. <clears throat> That's why I didn't set us up too high today. I knew this was going to be a quick up and down and wanted this to go a little bit better than, than last night did. Hopefully this works out a lot better. Alright, so let's see if I can't get a decent... Alright, so we're looking at 14,000 feet. Oops. Times 3. Divided by... Uh, let's do 1,500 feet per minute. 28 miles should be our descent. Ish. Because I'm going to descend at 1,500 feet per minute. So we're at 40 miles here. So basically right about when we get to Queen Creek, we'll probably start descending. Well, let's see. I want to get at the approach, though. Let's see. Let's take a look at that real quick. So let's find Siren. And that's going to be on the approach. So let's go to the ping one. Ping, there's birdie. Our wingman, we're not coming in on Duke. Well, we were coming to Neil, so we must be. I know Neil's on our flight plan. Where is that Siren? I don't see that waypoint on the chart. Because there's ping and ping the waypoint so yeah you can see us right here and then we're coming up going to birdie but then it's got us going from birdie straight to the approach Oh, it's right here. Jeez, right in front of my face. <clears throat> so we want to be at 6,000 feet by then. So yeah, I guess when it gets to about 20 miles, we'll start descending. Alright, so I think I'll just uh, kick back here for a few minutes, guys, and I'll uh, catch you guys in a minute.
All right, so we're getting ready to start our descent. So the first thing I'm going to do is just roll my altitude back here. Down to 6,000. Actually, we'll go down to about 5,000. I want to make sure I'm a little ahead of the game here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set our Phoenix altimeter. So we were at 300 zero, zero inches. There we go. And let's go ahead and start the descent here. I'm also going to sink my heading bug. There we go. And let's start getting that nose down. And I want to descend. Oop, there we go. And I want to descend at about 1,500 feet per minute is what I have planned here. Turn it. There we go. Oh, going the wrong way. That's helpful. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and pull the power off. Not too far. I need the torque to stay up. Yep, see? There we go. You know, I don't think I ever even turned the landing lights off, so... Oh, there we go. Yep, landing lights are still on. Pulse lights are on now. Lights on. Strobe lights on. Okay. Well, one of them less thing to worry about, I guess. You know what it is? I'm pitching my head down, looking at keyboards and things, and then I'm just looking at my eyes, and that's how I keep screwing up my camera. Well, let's go ahead and activate the approach phase. Did that work? Uh, what are you doing? Why did our course just change? Why did it do that? What are you doing? Every time I gotta mess something up. Why is it turning us around? That makes no sense. Is it taking us back to the start? It is. Why? So it's just taking us back to this point and then forward. I don't want to do that. Just direct. Thank you. That was strange. I don't know why I did that. Uh, this flight computer doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It really gets confusing at times. Hmm. Well, it is what it is, I guess. It's interesting. All right, well, got a nice little tour around the area. Now I got to watch my altitude because I don't want to descend too fast. Although, based on that, it looks like we might have been descending a little behind the curve, so I guess that worked out. I wonder if that's why I turned around. I wonder if I was still too high. Interesting.
What are we getting Master Caution about? Or is that just the sun hitting it? Okay, yeah, just the sun. Alright. It's like it's got this leg going backwards like this. Like, what are you doing? Oh, I think that's the approach leg to get onto course. So it's using that to intercept the flight line. I'm just sort of trying to extrapolate some of this as it goes. Too strange. I bet you that's the location at which I hit direct to Saren. All right, we are descending very quickly now, so let's let's stop that descent. Well, it's going to take me back around. That is so strange. So then there's no way to... Hmm. Activate leg to waypoint. So then, okay, so wait, wait, wait. I might be reading this wrong. So maybe, gosh darn it, gotta stop doing that. I think I know what I'm doing wrong. So activating the leg. So that would make me believe that we want to go to Zemos and activate that leg. Is that right? Or is it going to turn me back around again? It's going to turn us back around again. Nope, that can't be right either. It really wants to go all the way back. That is so weird. I don't understand. And I can't remove the waypoint. I wonder if it's because the approach phase is active. Hmm. All right. Well, once again, learn something new. All right, so what we're going to do here, we're steady course 353, so I'm going to show you something. Let's go ahead and go into heading mode. Oh, wait. Dunk. And let's just rotate that up to 353. Three. Oh, there it is. There we go. Close enough. And now, this will activate the approach mode. And nav. Right? Okay, so approach mode just set, altitude set. VNAV. that down 2000 
Can I? Maybe we can do that. It's too late for that, huh? Let's see what happens when we get to the darn flight point, I guess. No matter what I do, it will not let me. I don't know what to do here, guys. Oh, there it goes, finally. So I had to hit the waypoint. There, all right. <sighs> Give me a heart attack here, plane. You're stressing me out. And now let's change our navigation. To nav one. Approach mode. Oh no, that's not right. So what happened to my comms? Oh, I didn't rotate it. Son of a gun. Transfer. There we go. Alright, these are the things that we're learning. We're learning. Let's get that approach mode back on. There, now it's looking for the glide slope. And you can see the glide slopes way up here. All right, so let's back up a little bit so you guys understand what happened. I entered this frequency in earlier, but I did not transfer it up to the primary. So you need to make sure that once you're ready, you hit the transfer button, because I did not do that. So that way when I go into approach mode and we set the VO or localizer one as our um, nav source, you have the right frequency involved. And that's the frequency right here that we were looking for. There's our 11175. Okay, then I hit the approach mode. That has it searching for the glide slope. We can see the glide slope indicator here. Notice the aircraft's maintaining altitude. As soon as the, alt or the aircraft reaches the glide slope, it'll lock onto it and continue its descent, assuming I didn't mess anything else up. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see what our total distance here is to the airport. So we're just inside 10 miles here, so I'm gonna start pulling some more power off. I need to start slowing down a bit. fell through the glide slope. Come on, plane. What's going on here? <sighs> Interesting. Well, that didn't work either, so let's get it back into vertical speed. Can get interesting. Glad slope was locked, but the aircraft ignored it. Which I don't understand how that happened.
Oh, now it's going. Because I don't have control of the vertical speed anymore. You can see we're descending at 1150 per minute. So it looks like it's going to get us on where we need to go. Down at 165 knots or 160 knots. Go ahead and get that gear down. All right, past stage one flaps. Go ahead and roll flaps two. So flaps configured for landing. <clears throat> Looking for 85 knots on the approach. Getting a little laggy in here. I normally don't lag in Phoenix. Oh, there it goes. It picked up a bit. And actually, sorry, I think approach speed is 75 knots. I don't think it's 85. Oh, it might be 85. I'll have to double check myself in the guide later. But we're on the approach tonight. We're on the approach tonight, and we've acquired the glide slope. Look at that. We did it. We did it, guys. So as, <clears throat> excuse me, as this starts falling, as you see the diamond start falling, make sure that you activate the vertical speed, and then it takes over. So once it acquired the glide slope, I lost control of it. I could roll this thing up and down all I wanted, and it wasn't doing anything. So... We turn on to course, we were descending, we activate the approach mode, we set our frequency, we made sure to transfer it to nav 1, okay, as we did there, and we transferred it over, we got our frequency matched up, the glide slope was acquired as the diamond star drop, once it gets close to your current altitude, you need to make sure you hit the vertical speed, begin the descent, once it acquires it, the aircraft will take over the descent, you can see glide slope and localizer are now locked, and we are doing right what we need to do. Although it looks like we're falling under the glide slope, which is weird. Although but we're about three degree descent. I'm gonna leave it alone. It looks good. I don't have an issue with the way it looks. I love some of these landing config shots. Hello! There we go. Oh, the lights aren't showing. That's crappy. Let's get a bit closer. I'll take over control of the aircraft and bring her in. Go ahead and set the go around altitude. So we got our missed approach set in. Alright, let's finish this up. Let's see if I can just start screwing it up this time. My plane. See, this papillates are showing that we're low, but that doesn't look low. It doesn't look like a bad approach at all. Maybe a little, but coming a little shallow. That's all right. We can straighten that up a bit. I think those papillates are full of it. It's a pretty good approach. One of my better ones, I think, at least for this aircraft. Let her settle in. Let's reverse the prop.
All right. I'm not sure where the executive terminal is in Phoenix, to be honest with you, but we got some GA aircraft over there. We'll go join them. All right, so better flight than yesterday, I still think. Took us a second flying, uh, messing around with the flight computer to figure out what was going on. I'm still, I still don't understand why it always wants you to reverse your course. I'm going to have to do some reading on that. I don't know if that's by design or if that's just an issue with a simulator. Um, I don't know. Um, I'll, I'll have to get some some further info on that because I don't want to. I don't want to say it's the simulator and then have that actually be legit. So maybe if you guys can shed some light on that, anyone who knows this aircraft better than I, you know, I'll I'll take anything I can get. Um, but um, what are these guys doing? Just freaking eating a hot dog and chilling on the job. I see how it is. But anyway, I still think it was better than yesterday. The approach was a lot better. Oh, this guy's actually working. I didn't even ask for ATC. That's kind of cool. All right. We're out of there. Thank you, sir. Very kind of you. All right. Parking brake set. Throttles to low idle. Okay, and throttles to engine cutoff. Probably should have brought my flaps up first, but that's all right. And let's see here, auxiliary boost pumps to off, ignition to off, starter, oh, that's abort, duh. And not exactly the right way to do it, but we're just gonna hit the crash bar today. Turn landing lights off. Fuel pump selector, autopilot, switch to off. And we are cold and dark. Let's see here. And let's turn. I should have done all that before I killed the electrical power, but oh well. All right. So, yeah, as I said, better than yesterday. I f I'm getting more confident with it. I'm starting to understand a few things here. That approach was a lot better, I thought, um, than yesterday was. Yesterday was a disaster on the approach. It just, ugh, that was such a terrible flight. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll get there. I don't know why it's not letting me turn it the way I want. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little flight. And uh, stay tuned for more. Um, as I get more and more fluent with it, we're going to start doing more and more with it. And uh, start getting that guide going because uh, I'm really excited to get the next one out. So um, also stay tuned. Uh, we got A320, um, how to edit waypoints and remove discontinuities as well as um, those look like flying spaceships coming out of like Star Wars or something. Anyway as well as missed approaches that we're going to be doing a video on here this weekend. So um, I'm off all next week, took some vacation time. So hopefully you guys will see a lot of content for me. All right, guys. Um, once again, thank you for all the support. It means so damn much. I just can't express enough words. Um, and I hope you all are doing very well. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next one.